This has been one of those weekends where you just don't know if it's going to be raining or not raining. It feels like I was, I was just actually literally coming out to do this video about three minutes ago and a downpour occurred. And now I'm back out here and it's dry. So we'll see if we can get through this video without rain. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do is just take one last, well, probably not one last, but a last walk through the garden where the annuals are still in and looking good. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings. And as I go through on this garden tour, I'm just gonna stop at spots where I frequently get questions from you, the viewers, on certain things in this garden. So let's go ahead and walk through the garden and take a look to see what we've got. And I'll hit on some of the things that have been some of the most, uh, most asked questions over this past year. If you're new to our station, I would love it if you would subscribe, that helps me out. Uh, so let's go ahead and go for a walk. So all of the planters that we have in the front of the house are aqua pots and or self-watering baskets. Uh, the reason why we do this is when we get home from the greenhouse, the last thing we want to be doing every day is dealing with more things to do with watering when we get home. So we have these beautiful aqua pots here that we use and pretty much we can go depending on the time of year, we can go about five to seven days between needing to refill these pots. So they have been really a nice lifesaver, especially over the summer when the plants get thirsty uh, more often and we don't need to worry about it except for every five to seven days. When we do that, um, when we fill them up with water, we also are filling them up with fertilizer because as these plants are taking up the water, it's important for them too to be fertilized to keep them looking good all summer long. And in this case, these are the fall plants, so it's not quite as important that we keep as much fertilizer on these um, because these are only gonna last until it gets cold. Uh, but for the summer plants, it's real important that we kept them fertilized as well. Up here on the front of the house, these are lighted hanging baskets. They also have drip tubing in them so that they get dripped. I believe Rod has them on once a day getting dripped for about 15 minutes or so. Uh, these two have been lifesavers because we don't have to worry about coming home again and watering the hanging baskets. Also, as you can see this one here, the light already kicked on, it's on a sensor. It's not that dark yet, but must've been that rain came through, it kicked that light on. Um, these are hooked to low voltage lighting and it illuminates these hanging baskets in the night. So, I mean, you have these beautiful baskets, why not show them off daytime and nighttime? Uh, these are something that we do sell on our website. So I often get asked, where could you get something like this? Um, the white ones have been discontinued, but we do have um, some bronze, bronze baskets and the little bell um, hangers. And they're really, they're beautiful. Uh, so if you are someone that's looking to be able to show off or showcase your hanging baskets, not only during the day, but during the night, and basically, like I said, these are hooked up to water. We, t um, we hooked them into our irrigation system. So we've got drip line that runs through this garden area. So we just tapped right into that drip line and voila, when the, when the plants in the ground get the drip, the baskets get the drip as well. So I think I usually mention it, but I often get questioned again, which hydrangeas these are. These are the bobo hydrangeas. And a lot of the hydrangeas in my garden are the bobo hydrangeas. Uh, back when we planted up this garden at that time, these were the most compact hydrangeas that we had available. Uh, bobos usually get about four foot tall and four foot wide. Although you'll notice at certain points in my garden, they are much taller than that. So uh, other question I get asked is, why is there some brown in those hydrangeas? Typically here we get beautiful looking hydrangeas that go from white to pink, if that's the type of hydrangea they are. Uh, but, and that is the case for these as well. Uh, but these ones, in addition to getting dripped, they also get hit by our underground sprinkling. So when those underground sprinklers hit the flowers, sometimes what that can do is it can cause them to go brown faster than if they were just getting, you know, dripped uh, from the bottom and opposed to overhead watering. The Anna's Magic Ball Arborvitaes here under this lilac tree, they are big. Uh, if, if you go to the website, it says they get about 
I think it's two foot tall by two foot wide. These plants here are several years old. I believe they're probably going on at least 10 years old. So they're very mature specimens. Um, they're probably about two and a half foot tall by about three, mm, maybe this one right here might even be approaching four foot wide. I'd say that might be a stretch, um, but they're about two and a half foot tall by about three foot wide. Uh, so they definitely did get taller than what the tag image says they're going to get. Uh, for my placement, it worked out perfectly fine, uh, but it is something to keep in mind if you're looking for that one to two foot little round ball of beauty, they might get bigger than that. Uh, the other thing is too, these are on drip and get for, uh, watered every day. So they are kind of living their best life. So that could also be part of the reason why um, they're doing so very well. Firelight hydrangea in the last video, Rod and I talked about this being crunchy this time of year uh, because the flowers are spent, uh, but beautiful, beautiful addition to the fall garden. You'll notice there's just so many hydrangeas in the garden and that's because they do so well here in Michigan. This is a zone 5B, 6A garden and they really, they do, they flourish so beautifully um, in our garden and at, we're cold enough I think in the night that we can get this beautiful pinky rosy coloration where some of you are going, I've never seen my hydrangea ever get that color and those of you might be more in the south where you don't get cold enough nights to get them to to do the beautiful fall color making our way through we gotta kind of climb under a tree here definite signs that we have gotten cold the hostas you can see here how the hosta sage in front of me has taken on kind of that yellowish tinge, kind of the brown tips, and that is signs of getting cold. So that is what hostas do in the fall. They're, they're supposed to go to sleep, as are all of these plants in the garden. Uh, so when you do start to see your plants in the fall looking a little bit tired or ratty, um, just not looking great, that's okay because that's what they're supposed to do. I had somebody email me the other day about their astilbe and they were really concerned that their astilbe was looking brown and crunchy like you're seeing here. They thought it was dead. Nope, that's okay. That is what your astilbe is going to do this time of year. It's just preparing for its winter sleep. Even the Ulstermeria, which is a workhorse in the garden, you can see that it's definitely also slowing down on the amount of blooms that it's putting out. Still, I think it's, it's really quite nice and flowerful, but not the mass of color that we were seeing earlier on in the season when it was just so much warmer. Even the hostas that are protected here under the deck, they're too showing signs of getting tired. I should show you this wind chime. So I love wind chimes and this is a giant wind chime. It's so peaceful, relaxing. I love the deep sound it makes. I haven't had that up for a couple years because Rod said it drove nuts at night when it was clanking around when he was trying to sleep and we'd forgotten about it. Well, when we were cleaning out our basement, I found it. So I hung it up. He hasn't noticed it yet. I hope he hasn't watched this video. There's some more hydrangeas. Those are the uh, wee white, uh, wee white or limettas. And again, they're brown and that's, that's what they're going to do. They're tired. Not a lot of color right now in the garden. Everything is just really winding down. It did get down to 39 last night. So very, very close to freezing. Um, so I was just, I was hoping I'd be able to get out here and give you one more garden tour where we're still seeing color in the annuals. And then when I was going to come out and it was raining, I thought, oh no, I might not get one in here. Uh, but thank goodness, like I said, the rain stopped. 
this little bed is continuing to do so well. You can see the beautiful red sun patients with the My Monet Wajila and then the beautiful limelight hydrangeas in the middle there. The Bloomerang Dwarf Lilac putting on some flowers still as well as the Atlas Rose. So people have asked why, why do we do so much with sun patients? Sun patients are easy in my opinion. Um, we do do the petunias in the front, the super petunias in the front. They're on drip and they get fertilized regularly up there. Back here in the garden, we don't have the ability to fertilize regularly and they just don't do as well if you don't have the ability to fertilize them regularly. We find with the sun patients, they don't like fertilizer, so I don't have to worry about fertilizing them. Uh, one thing sun patients do like though is water. So if you have sun patients, you want to make sure that you're putting them in an area that does have the ability to get watered regularly. Um, they will definitely tell you if they are thirsty, uh, they will wilt and kind of bend over. Um, but usually they'll bounce right back if you can get some water on them. So if I had to say the hardest thing with sun patients, it would be just if you're not able to keep them watered, they may not look as good as if you are able to keep them watered. Now you can see here they're starting to look a little bit tattered and worn and that's because it got really really windy this past uh, week along with really cold. Uh, we got a lot of rain as well so the rain just pounding on them and they're so tall this late in the season didn't do so well. Here you can see they're just they're tired. Good example here, although this actually looks like a result of my son took him out with a lawnmower. So this I probably can't blame on the rain and the wind. This I have to blame on human error. They get so big, they get into the, they, you know, kind of go over into the grass. This path here isn't very wide. So as he was going through, he must have clipped him a little bit. These are gonna get ripped out here probably next week anyway, so I won't be too mad about that. But one thing I can say is you can kind of see here with a side profile, how tall these sun patients got. They're over two and a half, upwards to three foot tall. And these are the compact varieties of sun patients. So they really do a beautiful job filling out and just getting large. I think the thing, if you have a moment and have time when this video is done, head back to the May Garden Tour and compare the two. You'll just see the significant difference that the two tours are in the size of these sun patients. Here's a good evidence of getting hit by frost. They're just starting to look a little bit transparent. Didn't get a hard frost, but just enough that it's just kind of putting them to their end of season stage. This is a butterfly garden that we're in now. And I do talk about often how important it is to have pollinator plants in a butterfly garden, uh, as well as host plants. And this here in front of us, although it looks tired, is Escalapius Cinderella. And I came out here a while back and I harvested a bunch of seed out of these seed pods for next year. Looks like there's a few pods that haven't opened up yet, but if I wanted to come out and grab some more seed, I could. This is a great plant. Grab some seed, share it with a friend. Uh, that way your friend can also have Escalapius in their garden. That is the host plant for the monarch butterfly and is very important to have in the garden if you want the monarch butterflies. Here's again, little to no protection on these sun patients. And you can just see that they got chilly. The Firelight Hydrangea, this is one of the most beautiful hydrangeas in this garden, my opinion. And that is because I just love the breathtaking magenta blooms when they are in their prime. And this is in its prime right now. I wish the sky was solid blue behind just so you could really get a good feel of how beautiful this is. You can see there's a little bit of blue up there. What a nice contrast. All of the hardy hydrangeas in the garden were trimmed back last year. We did a very hard trimming on them. 
They were trimmed back to approximately anywhere from 12 to 24 inches tall. And they all have come back to where they were at before we trimmed them back. This one here is probably about six foot tall. So by us doing that drastic trimming on them, it did not affect the growth of these plants at all this year. They just shot right back up to where they needed to be. Uh, the reason why we trimmed them is I wanted to just kind of get some of the dead wood out of there. Um, there was a lot of branching. I made the flowers bigger this year because we did do the trimming on it. So the flowers are in a lot of cases really large. So I think that's kind of fun. Did I have to trim them back? Absolutely not. Uh, but I, it is good. It is good to go in there and trim your shrubs back. Maybe not that hard, but trim them back at least by about a third every year or two, uh, just to create some new growth on those plants. Uh, hardy hydrangeas bloom off of the new growth. So you don't really have to worry about uh, when you're trimming them. And I mean, like if you trim in the fall, winter or early spring. I wouldn't recommend trimming them depending where you're at much after probably April, mid-April or so. Uh, you might delay the blooms if you do. So that is really a beauty. That there is a Wajila Sonic Bloom Pink and that one needs to get a big trimming this year. That's out of control. Back in the corner here by the Hostas, People also comment on the hosta gardens a lot. Um, they want me to name them all. Well, the problem with this is, is these were planted over the last probably 20 some years. And when I started planting them, I really had no need to know exactly what each of these plants was. Uh, so we didn't label them. So that is why I don't know what they are. And with having so many of the plants, it's just, there's a few I can pick out because they're just, unique or they stand out uh, but unfortunately yeah I generally don't know what these hostas are called all as I can say though is when you're planting hostas you can see by looking at this the importance of mixing and matching uh, getting all the various sizes colors textures because they really create a beautiful patchwork of color uh, these don't look too bad because they are protected underneath this giant ugly pine tree but what that is doing is it is creating a little protection from the plants from the cold so that they're not getting kind of that fall uglies going on yet so i guess if nothing else the tree is helping the garden last a little longer as far as color as we're getting out from under the pine tree you can start noticing some of the hostas are getting kind of a burnt look Really, it's those annuals that are still giving me the majority of the fall color with the exception of the hydrangeas. Uh, here's another Alstroemeria. And for some reason, the name of Mauve Majesty, I could be totally wrong. This one's not even in production anymore, but for some reason that name just popped in my head as possibly being the name of what this um, Alstroemeria is. Few little hydrangeas even the anemone at least in this area here have slowed down next to that bright hosta there's a patch of anemone there and not much blooming going on there god with this big old flattening it almost makes me wonder if a critter got in here and just laid very well possible but if so it just happened in the last week because i haven't noticed it before few flocks are trying to put on a couple little colors there. You see a couple little splashes of pink out in the background there. In the back corner here though, we have a lot of color and this is coming from a uh, Rebecca. It's called Henry Ehlers. It's a variety we haven't carried in several years. It's, it's definitely a messy a variety because you can see how it's kind of laying over and spready um, but in the that was a Heidi word I guess um, <laughs> but in this back corner I'm fine with it this is kind of a messy corner anyways and I think I just love how the plant just kind of 
meanders its way through the back corner, but really, I love the flowers. They're not big petaled, they're not full petaled, but the way they look, that nice spike, spiky look, is so beautiful. There's a few anemone in the back there, some pink and some white, those are the tall anemone. Incredible's trying to put on a few more last minute flowers. As is Bobo. So this Bobo, the majority of these blooms are older blooms from earlier in the season. Um, but you can see how there's a couple of little white flowers in here that these came off of last minute growth, let's just say, or growth that happened later in the season, which is kind of neat because it's just adding a little bit of freshness to the plant that really is quite faded for fall. Some annual in there. Heliotrope, I believe that is. Proudberry. Rod and I had a discussion on this plant. If I, he liked it and he did not like it, I do. You can even tell that the berries got a little bit cold with the browning. So his reason for not liking it is he said it kind of is laid split open. Well, there's a solution to that. I'm going to go ahead and get it trimmed back. That way it'll be in more in check for next year. But I love the pink berries and how they are such a beautiful little addition to fall. My clematis wall, pretty much done flowering, nothing going on there. Here we've got some ulster, don't mind the weeds. This is like showing dirty laundry, but oh, what about that for a mess in my garden? There's a lot of poplar that's going to have to get pulled out, and there's some aggressive viney weed. Yeah, that's embarrassing. But the alstroemeria, these are the annual alstroemeria that came back last year, and they're still giving a little bit of color. So nice. I think this one is Inca Husky. Reminiscent Rose. This is the Reminiscent Crema. Somebody wanted to update on that. And then look at that beautiful little white flower. It almost looks like it has a hint of peach to it. Normally it's very white, but I think it has something to do with being late in the season. Sedum split open. Very typical of Sedum Autumn Joy. Here's one that's a little bit more protected, so not doing that split. Limelight hydrangea. So these flowers got so big this year because of the trim that I did. Uh, this plant's probably seven, eight foot right now. And because I trimmed it back to two, two foot, these flowers are almost 12 inches long. Very, very heavy flowers. Um, they're on thick stems, but even with the thick stems, it's uh, creating a little bit of tipping and knotting. Uh, next year I shouldn't have that. I'm not going to trim it. I'm just going to trim the flowers off this year, but we're not going to do as heavy a trim on it. So it should be, a, oh my word, sorry, squirrel moment. I never see praying mantises. Oh, they are such a good plant. To, or, <laughs> they're such a good bug to have in the garden. What a beauty. Okay, squirrel moment, and I apologize. But man, when you see a little something beautiful it's worth showcasing so next year so this fall we'll trim the flowers off let's get get back on track here we're going to trim the flowers off and just give it a little light trim take maybe a quarter of it off uh, not do the drastic trim that we did this past year and these flowers won't be as big next year but the plant should be a little bit more sturdy as well I know I hit some of your frequently asked questions. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more questions out there. So if there is a question you have about the garden today, please feel free to leave it below. I always love questions and you'll notice I get to all of them as well. So especially this time of year, if you've got a question, I'll get you an answer. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.